Welcome back to Med Smarter, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Today we're going to go over the gram-positive microbacteria algorithm. As you can see here, we have the algorithm for gram-positive bacteria. This can look a little daunting, but hang in here with me and we'll go through it together. So the first thing you're going to see with these organisms is that making them gram-positive on a gram stain, they will be purple or blue colored that indicates the gram stain is a gram positive organism. Then we can break it down into bacilli, cocci, or branching filaments just by looking at them under our microscope. If we're able to break it down to bacilli, we can then determine if it's aerobic or anaerobic, and that will help us determine if we're dealing with listeria, bacillus, corneobactum, or clostridium, cutibacterium, which we used to call Propionibacterium. We're going to skip over cocci for just a minute because there is a quite a bit more to that specific type of organism and go over to our branching filaments. As you can see here, branching filaments will be obvious under our microscope with our, after our gram stain and we can break them down into the aerobic or anaerobic. If a gram positive branching filament is aerobic, then we know it is nocardia or weakly acid fast. If it is anaerobic, then it's not going to be acid fast, and that will be actinomyces. So let's come back here and look at our cocci. Once we determine that we have cocci, or it looks like those little ball shapes, then we can run this through a catalase test. And that catalase test will help us determine if it is catalase positive or catalase negative. What this catalase test is doing, it is testing for aerobic organisms that produce an enzyme called catalase. How we do this is by adding hydrogen peroxide into the solution with that bacteria, and if we get gas bubbles or oxygen being formed from that hydrogen peroxide, then we have that considered catalase positive. So adding hydrogen peroxide to staphylococcus will give us bubbles, making it catalase positive. Then we can come in and do our coagulase test. We know that it's staphylococcus at that point, then we have to determine which species of Staphylococcus we're dealing with. So we're going to check the coagulase test. Coagulase is another enzyme that is produced by certain bacteria that are a virulence factor for that organism. And it will basically interact with fibrinogen uh, that's on the cell surface. So what we do is we come in here and we're going to add rabbit plasma. All right, we use... Uh, rabbit plasma instead of human plasma so that we don't have any worry of uh, other viral particles being present. Uh, we also have EDTA along with that plasma and we add that into the solution and if that solution causes clumping or uh, coagulating of the uh, the blood there then that is considered to be coagulase positive. So something that is coagulase positive that we've already determined was staphylococcus is now going to be determined as staph aureus. If it's coagulative, coagulase negative, we follow this part of our algorithm down and we check for novobiosin sensitivity. Staph epidermidis and staph saprophyticus have different responses to novobiosin. So if we add novobiosin, which is an antibiotic, to our auger plate with this culture on it, and it is sensitive, meaning that there is no growth of that microorganism, then that means it is sensitive to novobiosin and therefore is going to be our staph epidermidis. If adding novobiosin to our growth auger plate does not inhibit growth, it is not sensitive to novobiosin and therefore we are dealing with staph saprophyticus.